Okay, so what are we going to do in the next 30 minutes or so? Well, the, the clue is kind of in the title, photo fixes, because let's be honest, not every picture we take comes out precisely the way we intend. Well, there usually is a workaround, and that's what we're going to look at in this little series of webinars. So just to get to give a little kind of a, um, an advert, really, for, for the upcoming ones, uh, if you've got a, a picture that needs fixing, if, if nobody else can help, you know where to send it. The image file is here to help you. And the sort of thing we're looking for are, are pictures where things just didn't go to plan. For one reason or another, the, the final picture wasn't quite what you were hoping for. Uh, without further ado, let's close that down and get on with our first picture from today. So, so the email came in saying, uh, please can you suggest the best way to reduce the apparent granularity of the attached image whilst not smoothing over too much? Um, what are we looking for here? Don't mind losing a bit of detail in the foreground and the background, but the file is a scan from a Kodachrome transparency. Oh, I remember those. And it was created on a Nikon cool scan. The, the photographer here says he has a, uh, an archive of thousands of these pre-digital files and he wants to put them all on the image file, which is great, but because of the number of them, he's looking for a one-touch fix or maybe an action inside of Photoshop that would help, although he does think that probably the answer is going to be editing them one at a time. And he's using Lightroom 3, although he does have access to the Creative Cloud, or she, actually, it could be a she, of course, I'm generalizing, don't know which it is. So, okay, no problem at all. So, first things first, this isn't a digital image from a digital camera. It's actually a scan from a scanner. It's years since I've done this. But I used to have a Nikon cool scan way back in my early digital days. So, I've kind of been through this to a degree, but nothing recently. So, this is a nice kind of retro throwback for me. So, if I just make this a little bit bigger, you'll notice this is a TIFF file. Although when I opened it up, it opened directly in Camera Raw. So if I go and open the same file again, you'll see it appears here in Camera Raw. So that indicates to me that this photographer has already had a go at this image uh, inside of Lightroom. He said he's got Lightroom 3. And that's what would happen. The, the file would recognize it's once been opened in Adobe Camera Raw and would return to that state. Now, Raw is the best place to do noise reduction inside of Photoshop or Lightroom. So if you're not in Lightroom, if you're in Photoshop like me, and it's worth mentioning, of course, if you are a Lightroom user, it's exactly the same in Lightroom, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is simply show you how I would bring that into RAW normally. File, open as, and if you want to bring it into RAW, and it's not a RAW file, simply change the format to RAW, and then you can bring in any file directly into Adobe Camera RAW. So that will open a, a JPEG a TIFF or a RAW file in RAW. So that's a really nice little shortcut. Okay, so let's have a look at what the, the photographer is talking about here. Let's double click on the zoom tool and have a look at the... <coughs> excuse me. Oh dear, I lost my voice. The actual pixels in this image. And you'll see here that the actual pixels has almost a, a Technicolor rainbow effect. I mean, I, I get some noise in my images, but this one this one really does have some beautiful noise. And I'm actually wondering whether it's noise from the scanner or maybe even grain from the original transparency. So back in film days, before we had digital, we used to get grain and this kind of texture uh, in high ISO film. And by high ISO film, anything over 400 ISO was considered high back then. Uh, but so that's another story. But my way of de dealing with it is going to be exactly the same as if it was a digital file. So to deal with noise, quite simply, in RAW, we jump over to the Detail tab. And that's this one with two little pyramids just here. Now in Detail, there is options for sharpening, which I'll talk about in a second. And then there are options for noise reduction. And it's the noise reduction that we're really interested in. This is the part of things that are going to make this picture better for the photographer. So in noise reduction, there's two types of noise. There's luminance noise and there's color noise. Now this image has lots and lots of both. Let's start with the color noise. That's that Technicolor that you can see here. Now if I increase my color noise reduction, that's going to start to disappear, and the noise becomes well, monochromatic, black and white, or, or blue and white in this case. So that's part of the problem with the color noise right there. And because it's a scan rather than a digital image, 
Lightroom or Photoshop hasn't applied any noise reduction by default, and normally this would be up at about 25. In this case, I actually think you need to go higher. You need to go about 50 on the color noise reduction. So that leaves us with luminance noise. Now, luminance noise is all of the other noise you can see here. And to reduce it, I increase the luminance noise slider. And it slowly disappears. And the more I increase it by pushing more and more to the right-hand side, the more it goes. Because the, the photographer noted in his email, the further you push things, the, uh, the smoothing effect becomes more and more severe to the point where you end up not with a photograph, but a, a rather nice painting. Um, I don't think the photographer wanted a painting from this picture, so we need to pull that back down. Now, one of the downsides of noise reduction is it's always, always destructive. Okay, you're always going to do some damage to the picture. But at the same time, you pull back some of the, the, the information by hiding the noise. And you have to balance that amount of destruction with the amount of noise reduction. And there's no magic number in this at all. It really is personal preference. So I reckon probably sort of mid-40s on this particular image looks about right. As I move around, oh yeah, I can still see quite a bit of detail in the shot. So what else can we do here? Well, there are two more sliders of interest. There is the luminance detail and the luminance contrast. Now, these are new sliders. Ever since Lightroom 4 and Photoshop CS5, I think it was. Don't quote me on that. Uh, these came in. So if you are using Lightroom 3 and you do have access to the cloud, do a new, uh, go and get Lightroom 5 because it's considerably better. OK, so uh, let's start with luminous contrast because it doesn't matter where I put that. It's basically exactly the same. In fact, you might be in the, the belief that maybe luminance contrast isn't hooked up to anything at all. It doesn't seem to make any differences whatsoever. It does, but the differences are incredibly subtle. And you have to be working on the camera's highest ISO to really see even the smallest of changes. So we'll, we'll pass over that one. Luminous detail, however, is actually quite useful. If I bring that down, you'll see it smooths off the noise, but we lose a bit of detail. If I bring it up, it brings up some of the detail, but you also get a little bit more noise as well. So it's almost like a micro control for luminance noise reduction. So watch that one. That can be just the tool for the job. I reckon about there. So that gives me a nice amount of noise reduction. I just turn that off. That's what we started with, with lots of granularity and, and noise or grain in the picture. And there it is, reduced. Now that affects the whole of the image, all of it, equally. So that could be OK. That could be just what you need. And this is where it starts to become a very personal thing. For me, that's probably about right. I can still just about make out the word Boeing in small print here. That may not come over so well on the, the live stream, but I can just about make out the words there. It's not quite as detailed as the non-noise reduction version, but if you have the non-noise reduction version, you have a lot of noise. So that, that's kind of that balance that you have to make. Now, the photographer did mention he was happy to do some cloning and masking. Well, you can do that. Here in RAW, you can get the adjustment brush. And again, on the newer versions of Photoshop, which if you can't see them, let me just make sure I have it set to the new version. There we go. You can find there is the um, noise reduction brush right there. And we can make my brush a bit bigger. And I can further noise reduce that image by painting on it. Okay, So I can paint away the detail there and kind of balance things up that way around. I must admit, if you had thousands of pictures to do, that might be a, a labor of love, but it might just be the way to go to get you the end result that you want. It's all a matter of time, isn't it? How much time you're prepared to put into it. Finally, there was one more thing about, can I make an action out of this? So the last thing with this image, before we move on to the next one, yes, you can. So let's just reset this back to the beginning. And we'll go in and do... Uh, some noise reduction in here, okay? So, uh, in fact, I'm going to start with no noise reduction at all. I'm just going to open the image into Photoshop as is, as came off the scanner. So to make an action where you do noise reduction in RAW, you really do need Photoshop CC. It's much easier there. And again, you've got access to the cloud, so you have this. So on my actions panel, I'm just going to make a new folder. Uh, we'll call it noise 
and then we'll make a blank action that we'll also call noise and here in noise uh, we're going to make a, uh, a few steps that will be recorded as a playback action so my step is to go to filter and from filter I can now use camera raw as a filter brilliant so I can come into my noise reduction put my color noise reduction up put my luminance noise reduction up if you pull back the detail a bit and let's say that's absolutely right okay hit the OK button and that will record that as an action okay let's stop it here we go we can come down here and we can see that the luminance noise reduction and the color noise reduction have both been recorded as an action so that means I could play this back on many many images I can even add in extra steps such as making copy layers and then applying another filter at a different noise reduction and then hand masking them together so there are ways of doing that but it's much much easier if you upgrade to the new creative cloud products that you've actually got access to okay so hopefully that uh, gives a, um, a comprehensive answer to the question so let's close that down and we'll move on to another image a completely different image with a completely different problem but a problem nonetheless so nice little short email on this one and the email says uh, I was allowed only one shot and the flash has made it right on the grill of the car how would one reduce the shine for good results oh no can you feel the photographers pain you, you get in to photograph the, the car you want to photograph and the, the owner of the car says one shot and you're out wow wow that's that's tough that really hurts um, this is it so this is what we've got this is what the photographer sent me through it is a raw file this is precisely what I've got this is exactly what came off the camera and the photographer has noted quite rightly that the flash has added a, a little kind of hot spot here now there are there were things you might have been able to do in the photography stage to, to make that less but sounds like you didn't have any any chance there's no way you could set up a tripod or a multi flash system sounds like the owner of this area said one picture and off you go so you did the best you could with what you had available now we need to do the best we can with Photoshop to try and recover as much as we can to get a, a shot that is improved there's a few other things going on when you start looking at this picture there's a few other things that you notice there's some buckets knocking around the place as well um, there's some uh, nasty reflections here and there and it, there's just some little cleaning up to do with this picture okay so let's start with the bit you were most concerned about and that is the the real highlight on the grill here so on that grill yeah um, I need to do something with that so let's see what we can do there and I'm gonna do it by using the highlights option here so on highlights I can bring my highlights down and down and down and by the way because I'm in Photoshop CC it's called highlights if you're in Photoshop CS5 or earlier or Lightroom 4 and earlier this would be called recovery it wasn't quite as good then either so again, if you have access to the newer software, use it. And as, a, as you see, when I bring the highlights down, it does a pretty good job of recovering detail from that bright grill. But have a look at the rest of the picture. Can you see the rest of the picture is it's kind of dulling down, particularly on this wall here. It's just it's not quite right, and the number plate goes a, a nasty shade of gray. So everything in RAW, same in Lightroom as well, remember, everything when you move a slider is global it all changes equally now what I want to do is only affect this area here so to do it I'm going to use the adjustment brush now the adjustment brush has options for exposure contrast highlights okay brilliant so we can get just the highlights so I'll bring the highlights all the way down minus 100 we'll get a smaller sized brush and I'm just going to paint on that area as I paint you can see I'm recovering detail from the highlights in that part of the picture and that helps to tone down the grill rather a lot so that's before that's after wow what a difference so that's really good now if you look I don't know if it's coming over on the the webinar but on the screen there there's a kind of a, a redness to the image it, it's, it's not really gray now this is where Photoshop and Lightroom and elements can really fool you this is a really high resolution image I mean it's really high this is 24 million pixels what camera was this this was a d600 oh those Nikons they got good resolution trouble is the the video you're watching the live stream that's not showing you 24 million pixels it's 
probably showing you about one million. So a lot of data is being compressed and a lot of fine detail is being lost. So it's not actually red. If I just zoom in a bit over to that area, as I zoom in, you'll see that the color disappears. And in fact, there is no problem with the color there at all. There is no redness. That is just a visual illusion of Photoshop or Lightroom or Elements trying to redraw millions of pixels into a much smaller space. OK, so I'm happy with that, but there's a few other areas I reckon I want to work on as well. So let's just see. Once you start seeing one area, you start seeing little highlights just about everywhere. So we'll tone these down, little sort of specular highlights from the flash. We'll just tone all those down where we can, little ones here and there, a little bit down there. The, the number plate is the brightest part of the picture, maybe apart from that light. Let's do that light too. So rather than doing the number plate equally and, and really darkening down, I'm just going to make a new brush and we'll just do it a little bit more gently. Okay, so we'll just bring that in just a little bit less. There we go, and we can control that. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. That looks a lot better. Uh, let's just fit this onto the screen, and we'll make a few other general changes, because there's, some, so there's a better picture in here. All we need to do, perhaps, is just lift the general exposure a tiny bit. Uh, maybe, well, maybe pull that highlights just generally down, and the shadows generally up and all oh, clarity. I've done, I've done nearly an entire webinar and I haven't mentioned clarity. You've no idea how much that hurts. But clarity, yay, I can put a bit of clarity in and we'll pull up the colors as well. Okay, so now we're starting to get a much better color on this, this car. Is it the right color? Well, white balance is always tricky. Camera set to auto white balance, no doubt, has done a, a pretty good job. But maybe we'll want to try the flash white balance. Yeah, that's possibly just a little bit better. It's subtle, but I think that's better. OK, so I'm happier with that now. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to go in really close over the bonnet, uh, over the grill, because I want to take a good close look at this and show you something that still needs fixing, so we're not quite done. Although we know this has been recovered in highlight tone, have a look underneath the histogram, where it says R, G, and B. Now, in that area, if I hover my mouse, you'll see that it gives a value of 222 on all the reds, the greens, and the blues. In other words, that's a gray. That's not got any other color other than gray. As I mouse around, you'll see that the colors are pretty much all the same on the R, Gs, and Bs. There's, there's only one or two points difference between them. So all of this area is actually gray. Compare that to a part of the bonnet over here, and you'll notice the difference in numbers. There's about 40 different between red and green and blue. So this is a much more photographic area with actual detail. So although we've done recovery in Photoshop, it's not very good. We need to fix this. So let's come out of RAW, and we'll open the image into Photoshop. Effectively, all we've done is we've just painted with a gray brush. It's got to that level. OK, and we'll just wait for that to run. There we go. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is a little bit of cloning. So let's just tidy my screen up a little bit, and we'll make a blank empty layer. So I like to clone onto empty layers where I can. It just gives you a little bit of get out of jail free if something goes wrong. Nothing's going to go wrong. We'll be fine, of course. So I'm going to get the clone stamp tool, and I'm going to sample with a much smaller brush, just using my left square bracket to reduce my brush size. I'm going to sample from this area here where I know it's good, it's got detail, and I come across and I carefully line things up out there, and then I can click and just paint just over those areas, and we're just going to paint in a little bit of detail from one part of the grill to the other just to put that through. There we go, like that. Okay. Never going to get absolutely everything, and that's fine. You don't have to fix everything. Just little bits and pieces. Maybe we'll sample from down there just to fill in a few areas. Yeah, there we go. And just to show you how that works, if I flick that off, it was just a little bit bright. And now we've got some detail back. We can just drop the opacity just to blend that in a little bit too. OK, so I'm happy with the grill now. I've fixed the grill. I think I can safely say I've answered the photographer's question. but. I can't stop there. Look, there's a couple of other things that need doing that will just make things better. And whilst we're in the cloning frame of mind, let's fix them. There's this area of bucket over here. That's easily fixed. We can crop that out. It doesn't add to the picture. And we can probably lose a little bit at the top and the bottom. Okay, so 
sometimes it's easier to crop than clone. There is this wall lamp here that I'm not so keen on. Well, that's where I'm going to reach for my go-to tool, which is the spot healing brush. And we'll just paint over that. Okay, now make sure you have sample layers ticked, otherwise it doesn't always work. And of course it doesn't work because you're doing these things live. I love doing things live when they don't work. If that doesn't work, I'm going to go back to the clone tool and just clone over the top. Of course that worked absolutely perfectly. Oh, of course it won't work. We're on a low opacity. <coughs> Now, if this was a recording, I would rewind the recording at this point. <laughs> but I can't rewind the recording because it's live. There we go. You see, mistakes happen. That's the best bit of doing photography. It's mistakes happen and you learn from them. Spot healing brush just to remove those areas. There's a few areas here on the bonnet. Now, I've done classic cars before and I've cloned things out on classic cars before and I've got in trouble. So I'm doing this, um, yeah, with a, with a, yeah, a hint of... Uh, uh, slight worry because I know that classic car photographers get very concerned when you start cloning out stuff because it's sometimes absolutely vital that it's actually left in. You see, example, I've lost that little line there and I, and I know that would upset somebody, so we'll try and do that a bit neater. There we go. And that little bit there. So cloning out, if you are cloning out, if it's your own picture, that's fine. If you're doing it for a client, do bear in mind what you're removing could be essential to the picture. Okay, so we can go and do the, the sort of the lights. There we go, from the cars in the car park. Perfect. And a couple down there. There we are. Now, that bucket, that has to go, doesn't it? I mean, ah, it would be so easy to, for me to say you should just remove it during the photography stage. But you know what it's like as a photographer. That doesn't always happen. That option isn't always available to you. That's when cloning can really come to save the day. Now, this is a hard bit to clone because there's not much to work with. I'm going to do my best. Here we go. Let's clone from here. We'll sample a point, and we'll just clone that in. And I'm going to have to build this up slowly, bit by bit, moving, effectively chucking the bucket a little bit further along, one after another for the, the cloning steps. And I'm going a little bit faster than I would normally, because I'm aware we're on a tight timeline, and we've got one more to go through before the end of the webinar. OK, so we're just nearly there. There we go. A little bit more to do. Whoops. Even though I'm trying to rush, I'm still, I still can't help myself. I still have to be reasonably accurate. Okay. So last bit is just around the edge of the car. So for those areas, what you need is a brush with a hard edge. So let's bring my edge hardness up to 85. And we'll just paint that in. Like so. And with a hard edge, it means you can follow the edge of the car. Don't go for 100% because edges of, of objects aren't 100% edgy. They're not completely hard edge. They always have a slight softness. So going for about 85% just gives you that nice ability to have a hard edge that isn't completely solid. Just to show you the difference, there you go. Let's pop all those back on. And you can see how just cloning out a few areas makes all of the difference and helps to separate the car from the background. Okay, so there we go. That's the uh, the second one of our three done. We've got one more to do. And we've got a picture here we go, which is this one right here. So um, I said photographers would remain anonymous. I'm going to change that for this particular photographer because he should know better. It's me. Yeah, this is actually my... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the person organizing this picture. This was on one of my shoots. And things don't go to plan. This was a professional shoot for a company, an advertorial shoot, and it didn't quite go to plan. And I can't tell you the name of the company because it hasn't been released yet, uh, but uh, it, it was uh, a tough one to do. The budget for this shoot was really, really small. So the, the, the brief asked for blue skies, sunny weather, and it rained continuously over the last six months in the UK, so um, it, that's been a tough call to do. So we had to do the shoot in whatever the weather, and I had to just go with the flow. I've got the idea of the picture here. So I've got our model, and he's standing in this rather dramatic landscape. I wasn't quite happy with the shot. I knew I was going to lose detail in the sky, but I know in RAW that I can pull back that detail with highlights to recover quite a lot of the detail. And I knew I could open up the shadows a little bit. But the whole picture just wasn't working for me. The lighting, the natural lighting, was just not right. So I fixed it. 
and I didn't fix it inside of the, the computer. I fixed it by taking another picture. Okay, so this is my another picture. Here we go. Um, as we were doing it, uh, the, the model said, oh, by the way, I've got some really good tattoos. So it's like, get your top off, go for it. So I fixed it by having a assistant hold a speed light to, to light the scene, and that gives a much more dramatic lighting, but you can probably spot the problem. This was taken with a fisheye lens, so the field of view is vast, and the problem is, well, they're always going to be in the scene. Now, I wasn't too worried, because I knew I could come in here and recover the highlights a little bit, and open up shadows a little bit, and obviously put up the clarity, and, and do a few things like that, and just open up the file, and I knew I could clone out the, uh, the flash really easily, so cloning out something like that isn't hard, because the, the texture behind will fill in really well. What I hadn't thought through at the time, and my big mistake is, how do I clone out my assistant? It's not like the car picture, where I had that little tiny bit of wall that I could work with and build it up. Here, I've, I've got nothing. I've got no idea what should go here. Is there a tree? Is there a fence? Is, what, what's there? So I kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit with this one. So when I got back to the studio, I had a little think and I came up with a solution. So my solution is to select both the RAW files and open them simultaneously in RAW. Obviously, if you're working in Lightroom, they would automatically be open simultaneously. It's exactly the same in Lightroom. And then I'm going to work on my pictures to get the same result. So I want them to repeat the same processing. I'm going to hit the Select All button, so both of my images are selected. That means anything I change here, let's go and put it back to its defaults, will be repeated on both pictures. Okay, so if I change one slider, both pictures change accordingly. So all I'm going to do is bring back the highlights that I knew I wanted. I'm going to open up the shadows that I knew I wanted. And I'm going to have a close look at the edges of this picture, because this fisheye lens has a fair bit of chromatic aberration. Now, chromatic aberration can really ruin a shot like this, because nobody wants a green line around the edge of their objects. And this is quite obvious as well, so I'm going to jump over to the lens correction, find the color option, and switch on remove chromatic aberration, and that will deal with that problem with one click, which is kind of handy. Okay, I know there'll be some noise in there, so I'll pop the noise reduction up as well. So just flicking between the two, that's one, and that's the other shot, and you can see how much brighter it is with the flash. But there was also another slight error on my part. On the second picture, the shutter speed has dropped to 125th, where on the first picture, it was where it should be, 250th. So I've actually slightly overexposed this shot. So I'm just going to pull the exposure down for this shot only by a little bit. It actually doesn't need a whole stop because the light was changing. And I'm also going to make sure I set a white balance as well. So let's go with daylight. Okay, so I've done everything I can to get these shots as close to each other as possible. I'm going to open up both images simultaneously. Okay, so both images will leave RAW and come into Photoshop. If you're in Lightroom, you would export both images from Lightroom into Photoshop. So you can see the difference quite clearly. That's a really flat image. That's a really punchy image. Okay, so let's select all, edit and copy. I'll jump back to this picture, and I'll choose Edit and Paste. So there we have the two images on top of each other. The, tri the camera was on a tripod, so the, the image didn't move shot to shot. Everything is where it should be. That's great. So all I need to do is to remove the, the person from the side here. And if you have a look at this picture, there it is. There is that side area that I was lacking. Brilliant. All I need to do then is put a layer mask on get a paintbrush, and with a bit of black, just paint away. And it's as simple as that. There we go. In fact, I actually prefer that sky, so I'm going to bring that sky in. Yeah. There we go. And there we have it. And there's my final shot, minus the person, but with the flash. I might just tidy that bit up, because where's that flash coming from? So that was my fix for getting rid of a person holding a, a boom pole on a fisheye lens and a slight technical hiccup on my actual picture. 
So there we go. There are three different pictures with three different problems and hopefully three solutions that you'll find useful. Useful if you were the photographer who took them, but also useful just for, for general uh, information and knowledge for us photographers. Because let's face it, as much as we plan things out, things do go wrong. And that's why we're here to help. So if you do have a problem where something's gone wrong on one of your pictures, you'd like a solution, please do get in contact and send them along. We, we are getting some images coming in, which is fantastic, but you can never have too many.